hey, Karen, what do you want to do with all the extra money that we're going to have? Hey, Kevin, I don't know. What extra money are you talking about? All the extra money that we're going to save on our Independence Day meal this year. You mean the 16 cents that Biden's been boasting about? That's right. Wow. Thanks, Biden. Hello, this is Karen. And this is Kevin. And And this this is is Right right From from Us. Yeah, they're out there bragging about the the money that we're going to save, 16 cents on our Independence Day meal this year because of the Biden economic plan. <laughs> what What is the Biden economic plan? Spend as much money as you possibly can? Print Here, as much money? Here's a tweet from the White House. Planning a cookout this year? Catch up on the news. Catch up. Remember, you know, oh, like ketchup. mustard and ketchup. That's pretty clever, actually. According to the Farm Bureau, the cost of a 4th of July barbecue is down from last year. It's a fact you must herd. Hot dog. The Biden economic plan is working, and that's something we can all relish. I see what they're doing there. That's pretty cute the way they're wording it. But they're so proud of this 16 cents. Is that not insult? It's just insulting. Yeah, what about the... Listen here, you, you little people. What are you, what are you complaining about? We're saving you 16 cents. Be grateful. Well, what about the fact that gas prices are up 45% or whatever it is? And actually, they were talking about the, there being gas shortages this 4th of July. Well, it's because most of it burned in the Gulf of Mexico. What? You didn't see that? No. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't see the- Burnt in the Gulf of Mexico? You haven't seen the fire pictures? No. It does look like like a portal to hell. There's a big, huge fire in the ocean. What? Yeah. There was some kind of pipeline that broke. Um, it's I think it's a Mexican-owned pipeline. Okay. Oh, we will have to look that, at, oh, that one up. Yeah. I'll, I'll post a picture yes, of that. Yes, put some I, pictures I up. Seen that. When, when did I think that it's out now, but I think it happened today. Oh, see, I there's I've been, been videos out. of it all over the place of it. Just and it does. I've it just been like out it's, of the loop. It's a big fire just under the surface of the water, and it looks like a portal to hell. And of course, everybody, not everybody, but the the left is saying like, oh, well, this is what capitalism does, and blah blah blah. And it's like su- it's a Mexican owned. I'm surprised gas company. they didn't somehow tie it to global warming or something. Oh, I'm sure it's coming if it hasn't already. But anyway, yeah, they're very proud of that 16 cents. And it's not just gas. I mean, I think prices of everything's gone up. And how can it not? I mean, inflation's on its on its way, right? Yes. I don't know how I could possibly how we could possibly avoid it at this point in time. Yeah, actually, it's list lists everything here. Uh, there's a list of things that have gone up. Let's see, where did that go? The average price for a gallon of gas is three dollars and fifteen cents. This is the highest price for a gallon of gas since 2014. Yeah, 42 percent increase from last year. Wow. Yeah, so that kind of there, there goes your 16 cents yeah, after yeah. about a quart, a quart of gas. Right. Home prices are going up 24% annually right now. The median home goes up 16 cents every 1.3 seconds right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there went that 1.3 second. Yeah. There, there goes your 16 cents. My 16 cents was spent before I even got that sentence out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who... Who is coming up with this stuff? Well, Probably is it Joe Biden? I mean, he came up with the, the mal- malarkey tour, you know, no malarkey. That was, well, it's that definitely was a bunch of malarkey, that's for sure. You've ever heard? It says, "Hear that, millennials? You got a whole extra sixteen cents this year. Why don't you own homes yet?" <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great. But then you watch Jen Saki up there, and she's just like, just proud of the fact that. You're getting a whole 16 cents Did, back, America. Was she talking about it, really? Well, a, a reporter brought it up, but she said something about, you know, she just skirted the issue. She didn't actually address it because, of course. Why would, why but, would they even think that that would be appropriate to come up with a But the fact that the White House tweeted about it. and a tweet wow, about 16 cents. you guys cents, are really not. They're really stretching. Out of touch. You guys yeah. are out of touch. Yeah. Speaking of millennials knowing about that, do you... Do you think that millennials would even know anything about that? I mean, don't they get most of their news from Facebook? Uh, probably. In fact, there was something about Facebook. Did I save it? Yeah, social media giant unleashes accusations of extremism. There's something else that Facebook's doing right now. I loathe Facebook. I just loathe it. I hate it. It's just, it's just evil. 
Um, Social media giant Facebook, which long has been active in efforts to reduce, even eliminate conservative and Christian perspectives, has unleashed a new tool. It's a series of messages sent directly to its platform users that make various accusations. Quote, are you concerned that someone you know is becoming an extremist? One message this week said, we care about preventing extremism on Facebook. Others in your situation have received confidential support. And then there's a clickable button labeled get support. Um, another was, quote, Joan, you may have been exposed to harmful extremist content recently. Violent groups try to manipulate your anger and disappointment. You can take action now to protect yourself and others. And that just something how they have just completely twisted what what is dangerous. It's like we got all these riots going on, the BLM and the Antifa riots. And then here they're here just they're looking at innocent little grandmas with an American flag in their front yard as being violent r- racist. Well, it's not only that. It's like, to me, that's insulting. Like, listen here, Mr. Facebook user. Um, we think you're too stupid to use your own mind and make up your own mind on what you're reading and what you think is true and what you think is false. So we're going to take that decision out of your hands and we're going to steer you into a, a, a support group that we absolutely, you know, um, back and think that you should listen to 100%, which that, that button goes to, um, let's see when you click that get support button, it goes to a support group called life after hate. This group claims to help Americans leave their hateful ideology. And what might that hateful ideology be? If you haven't already guessed, here's a description on the site's about page. It states, our mission, Life After Hate, is committed to helping people leave the, far, the violent far right to connect with humanity and lead compassionate lives. Our programs, our primary goal is to interrupt violence committed in the name of ideological, ideological and religious beliefs. We do this through education, interventions, academic research, outreach, and brainwash. Brainwash? No, I, I had that last oh. piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figures. That, but I mean, that is so did, twisted isn't and so that crazy? backwards. The so backwards. violent far right. That is completely backwards. I mean, now I'm not necessarily against this per se, but to again slant it toward one specific group. Yeah, it's exactly the opposite of what the truth it's is. Absolutely, the exact that, I mean, opposite. The left is the violent. They're the racists. They're the you know the the left is the party of the of the Ku Klux Ku Klux. Clan, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it's crazy to believe that there are right wing hate groups out there who pose some hey, type of danger. You know, they removed a bunch of statues from the Capitol in the last few weeks, and did you hear that? Yep. They're all Democrats, all Democrats, because they were racists. Yep, yep, absolutely. But that kind of goes back to what you've been saying on the whole Facebook thing. Like, you know, you think like, you know, we go out in public and a lot we've noticed. We've definitely noticed a pattern here. The majority of people. Believe it it or not, we go out in public. (laughs) (laughs) We we do go out in public sometimes. Uh, Well, I do. You go out in public more than I do. When I'm not working, I stay home because I don't people. I'm I'm sorry. I I interrupted you. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I interrupt you all the time. So. I, I know, I'm used to it. <laughs> oh, uh, all righty. This just took a turn, didn't it? <laughs> what was I saying now? Oh, you were this talking goes about back the to young people. Yeah, we notice a pattern when we go out anywhere. It's like a bunch of young people are wearing masks. And I don't know if they're just, they think it's cool, if they think that they're truly scared of the Delta variant or whatever that's out there now. It's always going to be something. And I think you're right. I think it's because the majority of young people get their news from Facebook. They, uh, where else do they get their news? Yeah, I mean, they, they don't I think watch you're probably TV right. I or know. social media in general. Yeah. And since social media controls the narrative, well, what well there else, you go. What other social media would there be besides Facebook? I guess TikTok well, or something like that. Well, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. And Instagram. A lot of Instagram stuff too. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, and they definitely are uh, suppressing the truth about a lot of things. Oh, for and sure. 100%. Promoting the fear out there. Well, and making it seem like the far right yeah. are dangerous extremists. Yeah. And that, you need that, to be protected That also came from. up this, uh, you know, we've been talking about how uh, employers are having trouble hiring people. And it's, 
you know, I, we've always said that it's because of the ridiculous unemployment benefits that are being paid. Which is, you know, I mean, which is part of it. Part, definitely part. But the other part of it is that these people are just afraid to go back to work because yeah. they are, because of the virus. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think we mentioned that one uh, that our favorite restaurant closing down, right? Where um, our yeah, hypothesis was because we thought someone caught COVID. Well, it's open now. We went there tonight, and I really wanted to ask. So, which one of you got COVID? Which one of you closed the whole place down? Of course, I didn't. It's, Man, not, it's a, none of my business. There are a couple but, people in there hacking up a storm. The customers. Yes. Like, you know, when you cough, please cough into your. Yes, please. Elbow. She was I mean, like, just because we're. I the mean, customer's like coughing like all over the register. It's just not even bothering <laughs> to cover her mouth at all. It's Give like, listen, guys, public service announcement here. Yeah. I mean, this pandemic may be over, hopefully. For the most part, it's never, that, it's not ever going to be over. Well, but that doesn't give you the right to just go back and being nasty and and un, in, inconsiderate of other people. You cough, you sneeze, put it's do, put it in your elbow, man. Yeah, seriously, yeah. or wear a mask. If you're not feeling well, then yeah. wear a mask. At least yeah, keep your got, germs to yourself. Yeah, you know, we got the big uh, d- Delta Delta variant. Which there. I could have sworn I couldn't find it, and maybe I imagined it, but I could have sworn I saw something today that said there was another variant out there. Well, I think they, you know, like in in the UK, you, maybe. Yes, I Do you know did see something about? about that. Yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, somewhere. I don't know. I think it was. But are you UK. surprised? Well, it seemed like the Delta variant was timed to try to destroy uh, Independence Day, don't you think? Oh, I don't know. And you I mean, know, they never let a good crisis go to waste, yeah. so I wouldn't be surprised. So now they're going to have a new variant, don't you think, to 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 hit about the, the time the normal flu season would hit? I feel like it's always going to be something. Yeah. From from this point forward, whatever it takes to keep people, people, to keep people. people in a perpetual state of fear. Yeah. I think that I mean, there's a certain just, number of people that just are going to always be in fear yeah. and they want to be in fear. But don't yeah. you think that hopefully these they're going to be crying wolf too much here and people are just going to be sick of it and, I hope and so. not put up with the I mean, I was sick of it in May of last year, to be honest. I was sick of it in March 15th. I like was the, sick of it after the 15 days to slow the spread was officially over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait a minute. The 15 or it days should have been up. over. It's, yeah. not, it's really not officially over yet still, but. Okay, so what? What? Oh, uh, speaking of COVID, <clears throat> there's an article here. Unvaccinated Missourians fuel COVID. We will be the canary. As the U.S. emerges from the COVID-19 cases crisis, <clears throat> Missouri is becoming a cautionary tale for the rest of the country. It's seeing an alarming rise in cases because of a combination of the fast-spreading Delta variant and the stubborn resistance among many people to getting vaccinated. I'm going to pull a Biden here. I'm going to start whispering. Intensive care beds are filling up with surprisingly young, unvaccinated patients and staff members are getting burned out fighting a battle that was supposed to be in its final throes. The hope among some health leaders is that the rest of the U.S. might at least learn something from Missouri's plight. Um, If people elsewhere in the country are looking to us and saying no thanks and they are getting vaccinated, that's good, said Eric Frederick, Chief Administrative Officer at Mercy Hospital Springfield, which has been um, it's been bombarded with COVID-19 patients as the variant first identified in India rips through the largely non-immune, Im- 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 can't talk, non-immunized, immunized, immunized. I can't talk people. I need more coffee community. We will be the canary. So the reason I'm bringing this up, why are you laughing? <laughs> Did you see this tweet from, from Steve Edwards? That's what I'm, that's what I'm building no, up no, to. No, no, this one. <laughs> Wait. The Delta variant is in the Ozarks. We have been interviewed by NPR, CBS News, MSNBC, AP, Today Show, Good Morning America, CNN, New York Times, but not Fox News. <laughs> have you seen that before? No. <laughs> he is a he is a, a scoundrel. He is a scoundrel. And that's a nice word for it. That's definitely not the word I would use. He's Fox a, is the most popular cable news in our area. You can help people. You can help educate on Delta vaccines and can save lives. He is, Tucker Carlson. He is Henri. 
he's not Wait, what's Andre. The, he's what's an a, asshole. What's a, I wouldn't go that far. He but is. What, what's a good word, word for him? He, he's Henri. No, that's not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> but that's just one example. Because he had another tweet out there. And he must have been responding to somebody. I don't know. But um, do you have the tweet? Oh, uh, I don't think I've got that on my list. Hold on. I've got it. I'll pull it up here real fast. But um, it was a tweet that actually I didn't find out about until I was at work. And another associate showed me and I was like, wow. And then it went, it just started spreading like wildfire through the hospitals. Patients were even showing us a tweet on their phones. Has that made national news? I mean, this guy is on national news occasionally for things. So he's tweeted out. 32% a symptomatic positive rate, very concerning, from 4%. Four pediatric COVID inpatients yesterday, age a few weeks old to 18 years. If you are making wildly disparaging comments about the vaccine and have no public health expertise, you may be responsible for someone's death. Shut up. He put that in his tweet. Shut up. uh, Yeah. That's very unprofessional. He's the CEO of our hospital, guys. <laughs> you tell me, is that appropriate that's, CEO that's behavior? Is it? That is not very professional. Not to mention, okay, talking about the vaccine could very well save some lives as well. Yeah, there are a certain number of people that are not recommended to be taking the vaccine, right? Are, are they just like pregnant people? Do they... They... Well, no, just talking about the vaccine and being informed so that you have an educated, informed decision about what you put into your body, that is not a bad thing. It may not be for you. If you want to get the vaccine, by all means, go for it. It's your body, your choice. So anyway, anyway he's saying that if you're making... Um, if you have a dissenting opinion about the vaccine, you're a murderer, essentially. Yes. So, and to basically shut up. Yeah. That's, Stop talking about it. Just stick your arm out and do as you're told. That's actually pretty offensive. It's very offensive. I was fired up about this whenever I, I read that. I thought, how insulting and demeaning is this stupid tweet? How dare you, sir? Do you, do you think he actually um, does his own tweeting? You know how some people have like their assistants do their tweeting for them regardless of who's tweeting it apparently they stand by it because yeah. if they were getting as much heat over this yeah. and i know they are actually because the, everybody at the hospital was talking about it they would have deleted it the hospital did so re- they are it. standing by this and not to mention our infectious disease doctor also commented on that that twitter thread and was you know just they're just so condescending i'm so tired of them acting like they're holier well, than thou, you like know, they know what's best for you. Whatever happened to, you know, back in the olden days, there would be such thing as getting a second opinion from another doctor. It's like now, if you don't agree with their opinion, you're a murderer, essentially. Yes, absolutely. You know, you can't have a second opinion because our opinion is the only one that counts. That's That's their... So without, he's saying it without saying it, but when he's telling people to shut up, he needs to continue that thread because what he's really saying is shut up, sit down, put your arm out and don't question. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. And that is offensive because you, sir, are not a doctor. I don't think you're a doctor. But here's the thing. Here's another part of that argument is, you know, everybody's like, or these, these guys, you know, the ones that are off pro vaccine. You need to listen to science. You need to listen to the doctors. Well, what about the large group of doctors that disagree with this vaccine, that have a lot of concerns, and yet they're silenced when they voice these concerns? Are you saying these people are any less qualified than you? Yeah. I, I, that you just that doesn't make any sense. What, what's his background anyway? Is he? I mean, he, is he I even, have no clue. He may be a doctor. I have no idea. I, I mean, think he's it, been. An if he was a doctor, a wouldn't time. it say doctor? Well, you would think. Front, I don't know his name. But our local conservative talk show host lambasted him. I mean, just went like spent an entire segment yeah, because we saw we saw this tweet the day before. It's like, should we send this to his? The name is Nick Reed. Yeah, his name's Nick Reed. 
should we send this to Nick, to Nick Reed? And, and I said, oh, I'm sure someone's yeah, already had, done he it. He was all over it the next day. Oh, he day. was all yeah. over it. It was very satisfying. And and actually, there was a, another thing, that another incident that happened, oh, what was it, six months ago or something, where um, somebody was trying to make an appointment online, and the, the, the questions were asking what kind of insurance you had. Do you have insurance? It was either insurance or covid and the those were the only two options. And the person person was going, well, it's not either one of those, mm. you know. And and so she tweeted that out. It's like, what, you know, like, why, what do why, I do? why are these the only two choices? Right. Are you trying to get your COVID numbers up or something? Oh. And then this CEO apparently attacked her publicly for for suggesting that. I'm not surprised. I you know, am not kinda, surprised. Kind of like over when people overreact like that, don't you think there's yes. A reason? 100%. He's either feeling the pressure, he's insecure about it, or I don't know. There, there's always a reason. There's when a someone, reason for people to overreact yes, like that. Yes, absolutely. I, te- I definitely agree with you. And, and to me, I see right through that because I'm like, oh, the pressure must be getting to him is one of the first things I said when I saw that tweet. And then when I got to thinking about it and reading it over and over, it's like, I just got well, more I and mean, more worked up because it was just so He's under wrong. heat. There's some pressure because- uh, one thing that came out this week was that that, that healthcare system got a one star rating, and then the other large healthcare system in the in our city same city got a four star rating. Yeah. So that, and then plus also there was some heat about the trans trans uh, the rainbow mask. Oh yes, that were sent were we being sent out or yeah. Delivered. So because of Pride Month last month, um, our hospital took it upon themselves to you know we have to all be political now. We can't just simply you know be a hospital. Um, so they handed out rainbow colored masks, which to be honest, were pretty. And I, if it didn't signify gay rights, I would love to have had one because again, I don't, I have really no thoughts about gay rights. Do what you want. It's your life. Um, but I don't really, don't I don't support it. it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, you know, whatever. Just don't force it on us. But um, they're really pretty masks, but it made a yeah, lot the- of patients upset. They did not appreciate that. Yeah. There were a lot of comments. From the patients, uh, yeah. so I think they just they just they're that, shooting themselves in the foot by trying system, to be woke. That healthcare system just needs to get out of politics and just worry about healthcare. Absolutely, one hundred percent. But anyway, but the reason why I brought up Nick Reed, are you going to bring up the interesting point he made about the second opinions? And I mean, you kind of started going there, and then you got sidetracked. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I sort of went over that, didn't I? That where back in the olden days, you, second opinion from a doctor no, was no, no, welcomed. No. Well, and then to expand on that point, that we wonder if doctors are afraid oh. to talk about yeah. COVID and alternative treatments yeah, because of so even, much pressure from the hospital. Should you even would you even feel comfortable going to a right. healthcare system where they are? Uh, basically shutting down any other ideas besides right. what any conversation about it at all because you yeah. know healthcare yeah. there's no one size fits all in healthcare right. that, everybody's different yeah, in science that's what science is about you Absolutely. question things and you come up with the hypothesis and right. theories and then you test it and you right. know is it you know based upon the evidence so yeah so. it does make you wonder if our doctors are feeling the pressure of not being able to do what they really want to do uh, for fear of losing their jobs potentially. So I don't know. It makes you wonder about, it. I thought that was an interesting point that Nick brought up about the whole topic. He, ha- he always has pretty interesting. He does. He's on really interesting to listen to yeah. for sure. Yeah. He talks about local things here too, that are going on like this. Um, and then uh, again, with the COVID thing, they're um, thinking about, they're, they're proposing some kind of immuno, immuna band bracelet to show that you've been vaccinated. It comes with a barcode, the, the, the bracelet. Um, I don't know if it'll take off or not, but the COVID-19 pandemic has reached a stage where infections can now be controlled and prevented by vaccinations, whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson. More and more New Yorkers are getting vaccinated so that we can protect each other and especially protect vulnerable populations. It's also becoming more apparent that being able to prove your vaccination status will be a useful thing going forward. Being able to prove that you're fully vaccinated could become an essential way of living and being able to live a life of normalty like before the pandemic. The Immuna Band Vaccination Band is a useful tool tool that can help in this situation, and it's currently on sale for $17.95, a small price to pay in order to be able to prove your vaccinated status 
wherever you go. So what is it? Okay, so you you scan the barcode and it links up to some database or something like that. I'm assuming. So your personal health records are on some data, database that can get ha- hacked. Absolutely. I guess. Yeah. So, um, S- speaking of which, you know that they've got the the big prescription drug database that Missouri just signed up for, and apparently it's it already got hacked. Oh, uh, I'm not it, surprised. It, um, not the database itself, but a, 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 a Walgreens or something like that drug prescription information got out and mm. basically the information has already been leaked out. So, yeah, this whole identification vaccination thing. I, I, how do you feel about that? Why is it necessary? Well, again, Nick Reed always says, is it working in other States? That, you know, we're apparently Missouri was like the last state to get this into law. And the question is, is it working in other states? And the answer is no. So why do we need it if it's not working? Yeah. What's the purpose the of purpose identifying is, people whether that have been vaccinated and people that have not been vaccinated? Like, what's the purpose oh, behind that? Just oh. to further segregate people well, and yeah. divide people? I mean, that, that particular thing, um, the, as far as the vaccine database, yeah. So you... So, like, you go to sporting events, you know, if you're getting tickets to a concert or something like that, they can look on the database to see if you're vaccinated or not, I suppose. I just don't understand what the point is. I think, I guess the point is just to further divide people. Because the more people are divided, the easier they are to conquer. Yeah, for sure. Put them in small groups or large groups of people. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, alarming to me. Do you have anything else to talk about COVID before we move on to something else? Oh no. I think that's Um so what do you think is going on with this building in Florida? Did you hear that there's a firefighter grieving firefighter recovers his own child's body from rumble yeah, rubble of Florida condo collapse? That's, that's terrible. Can you imagine that's like your most That'd be horrible. It's like your worst nightmare is to it's, pull it's your own like child how, out. It's almost like how would they that even allow man. him to be part of the team? Yeah, exactly. Unless he was just like just ins- frantic insisting. to try to find yeah. her. But well, here oh, um, it gives me goosebumps to think about that. That the, is the horrific. Biden, the Biden Ines- energy sex <laughs> energy secretary, the energy sex person, <laughs> <laughs> energy secretary. Yeah, uh, suggested that the collapse was because of climate change. Well, of course. I mean, again, they're not going to let a good crisis go to waste. Yeah. Whatever they can do to push their agenda. Yeah. And by the way, there was a story also in the Times or the Post today, or was it today or yesterday, about how six people came down with COVID that were, you know, rescue rescue people. Yeah. It's like, uh, that's unfortunate, but let's get back to the real story, which is finding these poor people. Yeah. And isn't there still like 120 people still missing? 128. And they, they had to stop. They had to stop That's searching because the, the remaining portion of the building seemed Was to be unstable. Stable. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know what they're going to do I about mean, that. I mean, those poor people. I can't even imagine the the nightmare of not knowing. Definitely makes you want to oh, go when you go to gosh. a condo or something. Look at the cracks in the building and mm. say, "Is that you know? Is that serious?" Or well, I, apparently some of the residents were saying something. Well, actually, about for, it for years since I think 2018. Or earlier, they had been there had been inspections saying these cracks are getting serious, and they were actually working up a a bid to get the cracks and the structure damage fixed. Now I haven't seen any stories about this, but uh, a coworker of mine said that she saw a story or heard an audio of some phone call uh, of I think it was a woman talking to her husband, and she was commenting about hearing some weird noises in the building yeah and then well, shortly after that the phone died yeah and she was saying well the, the pool it looks like a looks like a sinkhole just yes. swallowed up the pool yes and then just right after that the phone went dead yeah yeah can you imagine being that poor person on the phone yeah. and watching the pool like basically just disappear and then hearing all these crazy groans in the building and then it probably happened so fast that yeah i mean it just gives me goosebumps to think about those poor people what a 
what a way to die. Oh my goodness. I hope it was fast for them and they didn't suffer. Man, that is just, that's horrific. So you think there's going to be probably a lot of changes to building codes and all that stuff from this point forward, you think? Well, I mean, that building was I built in the 80s. I think they've got the building codes down there. And that there's been some questions about the building inspectors oh. uh, down there. Uh, like not doing their jobs? Accepting or? bribes oh, wow. to pass building inspections oh, and things like that. Wow. So, I mean, there, there'll definitely be an investigation and Man. into that. But. Man, that is just, that's horrific. I feel like that's one of the worst disasters we've had since 9-11. Wouldn't you think? I mean, it's almost, it's like something you'd see in a third world, third world country, oh, absolutely. You know? And the way that building fell, it was just, it was kind of reminiscent of like the 9-11 building. It looked building. like a controlled demolition. Yeah. yeah, it really did. But uh, apparently once the, you know, the, once the cables that are holding the building up deteriorate at the ends and, you know, the thing just goes in on itself that's wow. I guess it's a normal thing that's wow. how they do a controlled demolition is you know they they cut those, cut those wires or whatever yeah, the, they are the cables, the cables. The structure, yeah. yeah wow that's crazy well i mean thoughts and prayers for all the people down there it's yeah, terrible sure, that's terrible man we had a a bear over yeah. on James River Freeway, about that was about weird. three, maybe three to five miles from here. It looked like it was a cub. It didn't look look like it was. It was they very said it was big. a year to a year and a half old. So that's that's still I mean, that's, that's probably an adult bear. Would you it? think? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. But how bizarre! I mean, that's not something you a would ever bear. think of seeing in this area. But yeah. I guess apparently we've got quite a few of them in the area. Yeah. But can you imagine that poor guy that hit it? You know, the, the person, I don't think the person that hit it even stopped. I think he just thought he hit a big dog or something. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I wonder how the bear died. Did it hit it like, because it had its face pixelated. So yeah. I'm assuming by that, that it had its face smashed in basically. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. But yeah, very but that's not something unusual. You, you would think of around here. And yeah. I, I mean, it seems like when they built how uh, a, a division of houses just mm-hmm. south of here, we started seeing a lot more deer in our neighborhood. I yeah, mean, deer all the time. Oh well, we have deer routinely just. But it wasn't until they built, walk through our yard all the yeah, time. It wasn't until they built a, a a housing development down here, just south of us on uh, that golf course. That that's you when feel like the deer they kind of pushed them out yeah, of their habitat. Yeah. So we'll probably be seeing more deer and bear in the future. Well, potentially. That's for sure. But we do have deer routinely walk through our yard, which is yeah, we had it's baby pretty deer. cool. We had some baby deer in the backyard. Yeah, we did. It was Actually, every cool. year we have baby deer in the backyard. Yeah, and they just lay down by a tree, and they're they're not even hardly even spooked by cars going by, and they just lay there and wait for mama to come back. But it's, it's pretty cool, but in some ways it's like, oh, those deer are going to get hit. Yeah, and we've also got the uh, the crosswalk sting operation, the big sting operation going on yeah i only heard bits and pieces of that what is going yeah, on with that you know with all with everything else that's going on they've got these um it's a sting operation to catch people uh that are not yielding to pedestrians in crosswalks hmm. so what they've got they've got like an officer in plain plain clothes uh, uh, another op- officer observing and then an officer in a patrol car so the the officer in plain clothes kind of like steps into the crosswalk and then waits for a car <laughs> to come by and not stop and then the the other patrol car goes and catches them oh my gosh can they can they not think of anything better to well, do with oh, with our officers have the GoPro up there. <laughs> 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 oh boy <laughs> that's like that's gonna be a really flattering angle um uh, no i mean i i didn't i guess i didn't realize that our crosswalk situation had reached sting operation level status <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's 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 like I'm, one of the most important things we got going on here, apparently. I, I guess. I mean, it's, it's always got to be something, I suppose. But anyway, what else do you have on your side of the? I don't really have that much on mine. Uh, I didn't really find we anything have the, interesting to talk about. Really record high temperatures in the Northwest in Canada. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it was unprecedented. It's unprecedented. Which, to be honest, I think it really was. It really was. I think they did set some records. Yeah, the previous, in Portland, Oregon, the previous record was 107. And then they go up to like 112 or 13? The previous all-time record was 107, and this 
record was 116. Wow. Can you imagine? Ooh. And I actually was there the year that it was. Are you serious? Uh-huh, 1981. So is it some kind of like El Nino, El Nina thing that's coming through? Well, I mean, you know, a few months ago or a few weeks ago, they were saying that it was because of the lockdowns. There was fewer particulates in the air, which was letting more sunlight get to the earth. Oh, my God. And Lord. causing more global warming. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I guess you can make anything sound the, plausible yeah. if you have the time I mean, there, and the inclination. Basically, anything is global or climate change. Yeah, it's but, climate change now. But don't but. you know they're going to use this somehow to come up with some kind of Oh, absolutely climate, they are. Climate emergency For sure. so we don't have a lockdown. I mean, never mind that it's gotten not as hot, but hot as hot, you know, back, what'd you say, in the 80s? 1981. So the, the fact that it's happened before, it's cyclical. Yeah, actually, I was there. I was there in 1981. 1980 and 1981 and everybody kept saying man this is the hottest it's ever been here and and which you know, back it, then it might have been yeah it was because it was the record yeah. the previous record was the same temperature in 1965 so it's a like a you know 20 year cycle but they yep. they were all everybody was saying you know usually it did rain every day but they would say that it rained a lot more every day during and the it, hot period the year that I was there. Oh. So, hmm. anyway. That's not something you would think. I mean, you wouldn't think of the uh, the Northwest being so hot like that. It's usually not. It's usually cloudy and rainy. I just like to know what kind of like front. There had to be some kind of front that came through that made it like that. But like you said, it happens every 20 years. But I mean, so. potentially and possibly they, a few months ago, the scientists were saying that because of the lockdowns, there was, you know, less carbon going up into the air blocking the sun so it was causing higher temperatures so i haven't heard anybody saying that about this but kevin if you don't trust the scientist then shut up (laughs) okay (laughs) okay i'm a murderer Uh, yeah apparently so stop talking about it it's our way or no way you're trying to kill people with your with your critical thinking skills i know and then uh, there was a biological female that was allowed to go topless at a pool and use men's fac- facilities. Wait, 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 wait that, what? That was like on the back of a, a story about um, a biological male that was allowed to go into a women's health spa. And the the women in the health spa were just like, they were just like going insane. Yeah, because, because this guy's a, like showing and, and, his private parts. Yeah, and the... The employees at the health health spa were just saying, "Well, he he identifies, he identifies as, a as a woman, female, so, so we're letting him in there." To do? But then we have the a female going into the men's section. Why was she topless? Because she thinks she's, she's a, a man. biological. She thinks she thinks she's a man. Oh my lord! <laughs> she identifies as a man. This. Where was this at? Are you guys really paying attention here? <laughs> this is <laughs> think insanity. about this. Think this about is, this conversation this is, we're having. It this is, is in Iowa. It is like the definition of insanity. It's Iowa and mental illness. Quite frankly, yeah. I mean, it's just it's mental illness, well, and it's sad that we are encouraging this countrywide, worldwide, really. Um, that kind of. But the thing, the thing with the the man going into women's spa that was in San Francisco, and apparently there was like, you know. Young girls, ch- children, yes, in there, and that's the guy why they were was just freaking out through there. Yeah, that's why they were freaking out because these little girls were seeing this man's kajunk junk private private parts. So, yeah. Anyway, it's crazy. But speaking of San Francisco, supposedly like what forty percent of their population yeah, is they're wanting saying to that, leave. Yeah, forty percent of people that I mean, live I can't in San blame Francisco. Them are wanting to leave. I mean, the stuff they allow in San Francisco, people to defecate yeah. on the sidewalks. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's literally a crap hole. It's, it's what it is. And then, and then Target stores are closing early because theft is so out of control. Yeah, apparently they've got this law out there that if, if, um, if someone steals something less than a thousand dollars, yeah, it's nothing. It's, yeah. I guess it'd be like a mis- misdemeanor and they don't, they don't even, the police don't even come. Well, what police? They've defunded them. Yeah. Yeah, so, so they probably I mean, there, have very there's videos few of people, left. people in Walgreens just like, yeah, just getting bags, like and filling, bags of just stuff. Fill, like they're shopping. They're just they're just filling their bags and, and walking walk out right without out. paying, yeah. and nobody stops them. Yeah, 
No, not at all. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, San Francisco is definitely going down the toilet. That is for sure. Uh, kind of going back to your transgender story, too. Did you hear about the first transgender that wins Miss Nevada pageant? I saw that. <clears throat> I saw that. I don't understand why the feminists don't stand up and say something about this because they're basically dehumanizing women and taking away women's Yeah, what about what, what like, about women's rights? Rights, like what they And these ath- yeah, athletes winning all the races and things like that. It's it's pretty unbelievable to me that the feminists are not like I know that there are some feminists pretty upset about this and vocal but just as a I mean, general rule. they were like role. vocal and screaming about everything back in the, yeah. whatever, the 70s. And now that these rights are literally being taken away from them and given to a man, a biological man, crickets, silence. It's unbelievable to me that this craziness continues to happen and everybody maybe, is just maybe, like, hmm. Maybe they've all converted over to be men. I, I don't know. And there's no... There's no feminists left. Yeah, I I don't. Well, maybe. I don't know. Okay, we're starting to get up there in, in time. Uh, let's see. Um, here's a story that I find incredibly stupid. So, Dems are paranoid. Harris can't win 2024. Okay, first of all, why would you even allow Harris to run for president? Well, she's she's next in line because she's been the okay. vice president. And see, that's what I have Biden, a problem with. Big guy has said he's not going to. So run. this whole political spectrum thing—it's like it's all—it's like get in line, your turn will come. How about we just elect the best man or woman for the job? Yeah. Why does it have well, to be the next that's person how in the line? The Democratic primary started out, and you know. Uh, Harris was eliminated. She was one of the first people eliminated. Yeah, because she had all her crazy radical ideas. Not even the Democrats liked her. Yeah. And look, look, she's the vice president now. I just, I, I don't know. I, is this the best the Democrats can do? Can you really, if truly you were, not come up with anybody, anybody better than if, Harris? Aren't the Democrats just like, if there is a normal Democrat out there, aren't they just like, Upset and I would love about that. to have a conversation with just your normal, average, everyday Democrat. I would love to get their thoughts about had, all the far left I mean, agendas. They had some fairly sane candidates, you know, like Tulsi Gabbard. She's pretty awesome. Yeah, She's that's what I mean. Though, why, why are they so focused on Harris? She. There's no way she's going to win. The woman can't yeah. speak. She laughs it's because maniacally. She, she's, she's just she's just I think a it's weird because they know she person. can be controlled. Well, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. But I don't know. I just uh, I don't know. <laughs> the 2022s. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I really hope and pray that we get our act together yeah. and get yeah. some conservatives in there i'm still hope i'm still hoping for this this idea of uh president trump becoming speaker of the house in 2022 when when the republicans take over the house they elect president trump as the speaker of the you house. Know, wouldn't that be awesome you speaker of the I, house trump and biden oh that would be hilarious fighting but stuff. you and i are so funny because we agree pretty much 95 percent of the time but when it comes to trump i just i feel like we disagree on him because I feel like he needs to just go away. <laughs> I feel like he causes more strife and more trouble than he's yeah. worth. I, I think, think if we have if the if the Republicans have a fighting chance, we need to put someone in there like DeSantis. Yeah. And not well, Trump. As I keep saying, <laughs> any Republican that's in there, the news media and the Democrats are just gonna completely trash him. Of course. And Make everything he says of course they seem are. ridiculous. But that doesn't mean that there's nobody else with enough cojones to yeah. get in there and handle yeah, the but, pressure. Yeah, but... Like, look at DeSantis. I think he's been handling the pressure pretty why, well. Why wouldn't we want President Trump in there again? Because he was so successful the first time. Because people can't he's look already been past... Impeached. He's already been impeached twice. I mean, what are they, they going to do? Impeach him three times? They can't look past orange man bad. They can't. They're not going to be able to look past any. any no, Republican. I disagree. I think like we need someone in there that'll oh, okay. that will so not want, offend people you, so easily. You want somebody like John McCain? 
Oh, our, no, of our course Mitt not. Romney. I oh. want someone, they're like DeSantis, not a rhino. I don't want a rhino in there. Yeah. They're just a waste of, they're a yeah. waste of party. Yeah. That, that's not, that's not but, it at I mean, all. Everything DeSantis says, they ridicule and make fun of and say. Yeah, it's, but, but DeSantis comes back with coherent, great arguments. Trump comes back mm-hmm. with this winning, 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 and I am great. And look, it's just. He just approaches it wrong, in my opinion. Trump does. I like Trump. Don't get me wrong. I really wish he was our president right now. But I think if he runs in 2024, Republicans don't stand a chance. Haven't you seen the signs? Trump won. Yeah. Do you know that guy that there's a guy that hangs these big banners at baseball games? Trump won banners. Yeah. And they go berserk and like, don't they kick these people out? When they but he, got, he got banned. He, yeah. He's banned. He, well, he yeah, got a letter from the. That's- from That's the what we do now is we ban people uh, whatever for whatever it is you the, know, the baseball thoughts. league. He's not allowed to come to any baseball games. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> hey, oh. also, you guys, uh, you might start thinking about Christmas. You might start thinking about doing your Christmas shopping now. Yeah, you know this year. This year is halfway over. Already. Well, for sure. I mean, it this always year is goes. Halfway over. It seems like it goes super fast too. After Fourth of July is over, yeah, and then suddenly we're putting Christmas trees up. But it's a. Uh, there's an article here. It's too late to save Christmas. Retailers brace for unprecedented, unprecedented shortages of everything. I love that word. I know you do. With global container shipping rates hitting never before seen levels amid a historic global scramble to secure good and in inventory, suppliers to Walmart, Target, Amazon.com, and other major retailers told Reuters they are placing holiday orders for Chinese made merchandise. Weeks much earlier this year, as a global shipping backlog threatens to leave many gift buyers empty-handed this Christmas shopping season. Reuters surveyed nearly a dozen suppliers and retailers of everything from toys to computer equipment in the United States and Europe. All expect weeks-long delays in holiday inventory due to shipping bottlenecks, including a global container shortage and the recent COVID-related closure of the southern Chinese port of Yantian. Yantian? which serves manufacturers near some other Chinese city. So all that to say, you might want to think ahead and start doing your shopping now because by the time you're ready to buy something, that may not be there. Yeah, it's true. And I have to say, there's nothing more while you're laughing. (laughs) (laughs) Do I seem dark? Do you seem dark? Oh, your light went out. Oh, no. I I forgot to turn my light on. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. The spotlight needs to be on me anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, we do need like a spotlight on you. <laughs> I should just be over like to the side anyway. <clears throat> I, I'm kind of like Ed McMahon. I should just be like to the side. And I'll just say, hey, oh, every once in a while. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> That's true. This we really should just name this the Karen podcast. Right. <laughs> Speaking of, have you seen the Karen the trailer for the Karen movie? Oh no, I think we talked about this last podcast too. No, we haven't talked about it yet. Have we? I think we have actually, didn't we? I don't think There's so. There's a movie called Karen, and she's uh, you know, she's being a Karen apparently, and she doesn't like her African American nature or natures, her black neighbors, and uh, she ends up being a huge nightmare and. Just, I don't know. She complains about the neighbor's trash can being out there. Yeah. Who's that sound like? You. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm the neighborhood Karen. Speaking of the name Karen, did you know that there, nobody is naming their child Karen anymore? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I don't know if I told you this or not, but did I talk about this on the last one? If I did, I apologize. But uh, there's one review on our uh, three star review on our (laughs) Apple podcast. And they're talking about how we're snowflakes and they even have Karen, person named Karen talking. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, okay. The Karen sure. baby name is the lowest in 80 years. Wow. Kevin is also decreasing. So, yeah. There. Yeah, but to be fair, I feel like names nowadays are more like unusual, the, crazy, hard to pronounce the, names. The peak of Karen was in 1965. So, oh, well. I wonder what. Was there some... Um, well, it was just a popular name at the time, I w- guess. Was there like a mom. movie star named Karen that, you know, how people kind of name their 
like Britney, Britney Spears. Yeah, I don't we know. We got to talk about Britney Spears sometime. Have you heard about what's going on with yeah, her? Yeah, that poor girl. Yeah, it's crazy. I we'll feel talk- like there's something more going on with her. I don't know. Like maybe like there's some rumors that they, she has dementia and I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, there must was there like a popular movie star named Karen oh, in 1965? Oh, I don't know. There might have been. I have no idea. We'll have to, we'll have to research that one. But I mean, that's one of the reasons why our boys are named what they're named. There remember? wasn't there wasn't any movie stars, but we just liked no, no, the no, names. No, 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 nope, nope. I remember exactly how and why we picked the names. Um, it was Dynasty TV show. Blake Carrington was one really? of the characters on that show, and I, I was like, that. "Oh, I like that name, Blake." I didn't know that. Yeah, and then nine oh one two or nine oh two one zero TV series. Yeah, okay. There was a Brandon on there, and I like that name, and that's how we chose Brandon. Hmm. So. So, okay. yeah, it might now have been you know. something like that. It might have been some kind yeah. of show where my mom was like, oh, I like that name. Okay, let's answer some questions. Questions? Question. Right. Question time. We should have like a little segment music. Question time. Yeah. A little like, you know, blur that comes up. Yeah. Question time. Um, who are your role models? Who do you look up to? I know what you're going to say. I mean, I, I've had a lot of role models in my life. I mean, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all. Oh, that's you know. a good answer. But my dad, my, I mean, my that's dad, I've tried, to say. <laughs> I tried to be like my dad. My dad is like a genius. Yeah, and he can do everything. And yes. I've tried to be like my dad. Yes. A lot. Thank you, Jim. You've taught him a lot. And he's yeah. been he's been super useful yeah. throughout this marriage. Yeah, my dad can <laughs> fix anything or build yeah, anything. He can. And I've tried and you, to be like that. And you are a definitely lot. the same. Play, play the guitar. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, you know, knows how to do math, electronics, I mean, everything. But then I've had a lot of other role models, too, like uh, people that I worked for, like Jerry Finsterbaker, who was um, I, he was my boss and the CEO of the company. I learned a lot from him, yeah. too. Yeah, he has since passed away, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I've got quite a few role models like that. What about you? Yeah. I, I don't really have any role models. I work for a female doctor at work, and I really admire her. I can't imagine being a neurosurgeon in such a male-dominated field. That's got to be super challenging. So I admire her for tackling that and conquering it. She's she's pretty great. That's pretty amazing. She's pretty young, too. Yeah, she is pretty young. I think she's in her mid-30s, and she is rocking Can't you it. imagine being a brain surgeon at no. the age of mid-30s? That she's pretty just, incredible. I really, I like her a lot. I really uh, admire her. It just makes me feel like a hugely. loser. I'm, you know. Well, I don't know about that, but it just, it does kind of make you wish you may, you might have accomplished a little more in life. You know what I mean? Like just, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much more you can accomplish after being a brain surgeon. I mean, that's. I know a rocket that's scientist. Pretty high. She could be a, a rocket, rocket scientist. scientist. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Other than that, I really can't think of anybody that I look up to just i i just admire strong compassionate women i guess i just you know, women well men too just people in general it kind of goes back to what we were like how you opened the door for those people tonight when we left the restaurant it's just you know just be nice to just people be nice just be people. polite and considerate and um i admire people that that's, are that are like that's that one to your we, fellow humans we've been going to the the walmart in a, a small town south of here, and just like people are so much nicer there. Oh, absolutely! Like, you know, you absolutely you, you pull your cart in front of them. In front of them they yeah. go, "Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry." <laughs> like, and they smile at you. Yeah, you come here, and it's people just scowl yeah. and just so I don't know, but um, would you like to be proudest? Would you like to be more proud? Of your accomplishments or your character, what would you like to be known for? Your accomplishments or your character? What would you like people to remember about character, you? Character. I mean, a lot of people are have accomplishments, but their character is not. They're very just good. not that great people. Like, I mean, look at Bill Clinton. I mean, his yes. character. Yes, absolutely. Whatever happened to the content of your character, not the color of your skin? From I don't know. Martin Luther King, you know. I mean, we have so many people that have terrible character, but they've accomplished a lot of things. Yeah. So I think character. Yeah, I agree 100%. 
Um, ooh, would you help someone close to you end their life if they were dying? If they were in pain, a lot of pain for sure. Yep. I mean, and that's what hospice it seems is. Seems like the the compassionate thing to do. Yeah. If you, I mean, it would be super hard to help someone in their life that you loved and cherished, but yeah. I mean, it would be harder to see them suffer. Yeah, if someone was in pain or, you know, su- suffering mentally or something, yes, for sure. But what if they weren't on hospice? What if they were just constantly in pain and just, you know what I mean? Like, not necessarily terminal, but the quality of their life is just, there's no quality of life. So you're saying, would you like... Like assisted suicide or something. Give them a gun. Give them your gun well, to take care are, of themselves. Are messy. <laughs> it's or not whatever. necessarily a gun. I don't know. That that's man, that would be that would be like well, guess, the ultimate if you moral think about, dilemma. If you think about that, you know like the methods that are available to end someone's life. I would if if I if I ever went down that road and it would have to be like after every other avenue had been exhausted, there was no other way. There's nothing else. They've tried everything. Then it's got to be something quick and it's got to be something painless. Yeah. Or you could just send them to the same jail cell that Epstein was in or uh, John McAfee. Yeah. Suspicious. But yeah. Hopefully we are never put in that position. Yeah. That's kind of one of my biggest. That's essentially what they've got hospice for. So. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. No, it is. It's just that. I mean, there are certain criteria to be on hospice and sometimes quality of life, you don't meet that criteria. So you're not technically on hospice, but you don't have any life. You're just, I don't know. I I think that would be a really tough job. That's one of my biggest fears, I think, is to like have a stroke or, you know, have dementia and just become a huge burden on my family. I think that's one of my biggest fears. And I pray to God that never happens. So anyway. Um, what's your dream job? If you could do anything, does I, education, I, money aside, what you would know, you I do? I just want to be like a real estate, real estate tycoon. Oh, tycoon. I thought you were going to say like a real estate agent. No, not a real estate agent, <laughs> which would be probably a fairly, pretty cool yeah, job, but uh, sure. I was going to be a real estate tycoon. Just and, own a uh, lot of properties. Own a lot of properties. And, and then I saw the movie Pacific Heights. Did you remember that movie? Yeah. Where they, they rent yeah. they they rent their upstairs apartment to yeah. this guy, Michael he was Keaton. An absolute and he nightmare. just tore the place up. And yeah. after that I didn't want to be a real estate yeah. tycoon any anymore. Uh and then I sort of thought it would be really cool to be like a like just a stock stock market. Investor. I think you'd be good at that. Yes. I think I, you'd be I really good, good at that, that, actually. Oh. I showed you how much I know. I don't but, know anything about that stuff. Yeah, but, but I mean, um, the job I have now I, is pretty much ideal. For you, really? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I have just a few clients and I take care of them and, you know, hmm. I can kind of come and go when I please. What about yeah. you? What would I don't know. I I don't know. An editor or something? Not my dream The, the only thing job. about it is an editor, you'd have to read. It's like re- reading for you is fun. Oh, I love reading. It's, it's like and my if favorite you were an pastime. editor, you would have to read. So it's just like whenever I was a, in a band. Oh, I it's see like, you're, where you're going with this. It's like it was it was great fun to yeah. play music, but then when I had to, right. it wasn't any fun anymore. Right. No, I I agree with you. You're right. If I had to do it, I would no longer want to do it. If if I had if my dream job, I think it would be really fun to just kind of like be a travel blogger, or vlogger, or just travel the world. At my own pace, no agenda, stay as someplace as long as I Tra- want to or so as just, short as I want to. Just to travel. Just to see the world. Blogger. Because I, I feel like... I, cause I Why get, don't we do that? Oh, I feel like everybody needs to I travel mean, outside ready, of their own country just to get a different perspective. They're getting, they're getting ready to have ma- uh, mandatory vaccines at your job. So well, why don't you just quit I mean, and we'll just go I may end up the world. doing that. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I, I'm definitely going to have to probably find a different career here pretty quick. But that's something that everybody wants to do. You know, everybody wants to travel the world. And, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So it's kind of a cliche kind of answer. But wouldn't it be kind of, I mean, wouldn't it, 
I guess my point is it would be difficult because there's a lot of people going for that same thing, you know, mm. whereas like if you're a, whatever, a trash collector or something, not to, not to say that that's not a good job, but that would be something that would be easier to get into because there's not everybody going for it. You know, I guess the bottom line is a dream job would be something that you're not tied to. That's super flexible. You can do whenever you feel like it. You know, you don't, you're, there's no restrictions. There's no guidelines. There's no human resource. You know, you just do what you want when you want. Yeah. Something like a writer where you just write your novel and then you write it and then you're done. You know, you just maybe, maybe go do a few book, right. book signing thing tours. But I wouldn't want to be under a contract because yeah. then I have to write. Yeah. Then if I have that if deadline. You're just to write some novels and right. self publish them somehow. Yeah. I think he's trying to say something. I think that's what you should do. <laughs> then we can go on book tours together all over the world. <laughs> you could be my man- my manager, my accountant for sure. Um, okay, are we about we're, we're about out there, we're aren't we? Really ridiculous. Okay. How was time. your week? It was awesome. You got the floor done in the trailer. Got the floor pretty much done today. I just have to trim it. Looks it looks great. It. Yeah, it came out pretty good. I know. We need to take another video of it. Yeah. So the next thing on the agenda, so you got the split split level in there, the air conditioner. You got the floor in there. It looks phenomenal. Now you're going to put the windows in, which we're going to discuss tomorrow on where we want them. And then you have to paint. Mm-hmm. And are you done? For the most part? I mean, there's a lot of miscellaneous things to do. I've got trim, trim to do. I've got to finish the drains for the sink and the toilet. And... Um, but that that's all the big projects. Yeah, essentially, though, right? yeah. I got, you know, like a light for the over the door, which is going to be pretty easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Easy to do, but. Yeah. Are and, we going to get some kind of canopy for it, you yeah, think, an I awning? I don't know about that. I, know about that. Mm-hmm. I think we could just have like a, like a, like one of those tents, what do they call it? Like a. Oh, like a, like a canvas, yeah. not a canvas. Canvas, um, it, like a tent thing. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of yeah, it right now. Out but. there. I think I'd rather do that than have something. Because like one of the goals of this is to kind of make this. simple. Simple and kind of like a stealth RV. So people look at it, it's like, I'm not really sure if that's an RV or not, you know? Yeah. You know, so it kind of looks like a, it almost looks like a work trailer. And what, from the outside. why do you feel like that? Why do you know. want to make it stealthy? I don't know. Just if we ever wanted to, we could park in town or something and people would just think it's a work truck or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You know? I guess. I guess you could technically use it as a work truck too. You just wouldn't want to. Yeah. I mean, it's kind you of wouldn't full mess, of furniture and stuff. Well, you wouldn't want to mess yeah. up yeah. your hard work. But I am very proud of you. Yeah. I'm very proud of you for putting that together from scratch. Yeah. Kevin, it looks phenomenal. It's four four months tomorrow, actually. Is it really? Uh-huh. Four months. It's... Really? I yeah, feel like it it's just... been longer than that. It was March third, March fourth. Oh I my it. gosh! Uh-huh. See, I, I it thought it was longer, longer than, than that. that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm actually to tell you the truth. I'm sort of looking forward to getting through with it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to using I'm it and going. To using it, but I'm just ready going to do, places. do something else. I bet you are getting kind of burned out yeah. on it. Well, you're very close, and yeah, I'm very proud close. of you. And I can't wait to take another yeah. video and show you guys. It's really so. How great. was your week? Great. Just my week's not as exciting as yours. I mean, at work, I go home, I sleep, I go back to work. So you're pretty busy. It's it's been super busy at work, but it's work. So yeah, you can know you can read all about that on my blog if you want. Right from Karen dot com. That's W R I T E from Karen dot com. Let's wrap this up. I think we've taken enough of your time. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching and listening. (laughs) We appreciate your time. Time is valuable. So um, be safe and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.
fell asleep though earlier. Did you? 